and welcome back to JTV again. This is a follow-up video to two of them that I put up a little while back. One was on using DriftNet and the other one was on using EdderCap. I had a request in the comments on one of those to do a video on how to monitor web traffic using the Backtrack CD. So I have it set up in my VMware as a virtual machine and I'm going to show you how to do this. The first thing you're going to need to do is both of the tools, EdderCap and WebSpy, are going to require Mozilla instead of the Firefox executable. So we need to make a Mozilla executable before we can continue. To do this, you want to CD into user bin, and then you want to type LN-S, which means make a symbolic link from Firefox to Mozilla. And then just press enter. And since mine already exists, it's going to give me an error message. This way, now you can type Mozilla, and it'll open up a web browser for you. Now we'll start a new session. And then we get the Backtrack CD startup screen. So we'll go ahead and close that out for now. And the next thing we need to do is we need to go over to EdderCap, because we're going to use it for both of these attacks. First thing you'll need to do when you start EdderCap up is go up to sniffing and down to unified sniffing. And then you'll need to go to hosts and scan for hosts. Now we want to go ahead and go to man in the middle because we're going to enable art poisoning. We're going to sniff remote connections and press OK. And then we're going to go ahead and start sniffing. Now we're going to go back to our terminal and we're going to start Mozilla in the background. This is done by simply typing Mozilla space ampersand. Press OK and you see it start up on process 3670 and we now have our window. Now I'm going to go back to my host machine where I have Google brought up here. I'm going to refresh the page and as you can see nothing happens. The reason for this is because we don't have the plugin loaded. So go ahead and go back to EdderCap as soon as you can find it and go up to plugins and manage plugins. Now we're going to scroll down through the list until we find one that says remote browser. Go ahead and double click on that. Now it's going to send any visited websites to the browser you have set up in Backtrack. So let's go ahead and go back to our host machine again and go up to the top and refresh our page once more. Now we go back to Backtrack we get the Google page. Now one thing you might see, which is happening right now, is that it's going to enter into a loop. So you're going to keep getting windows opened up each time. So the best way to stop it is just to go back and double click on that remote browser to stop it. I haven't yet found a way to isolate it because I haven't looked into it a whole lot. But if you keep on top of it, you can close these tabs out pretty quick and then when the next website comes up it'll show it in here as well. So that's using EdderCap. Let's go ahead and close out the plugins and you can minimize EdderCap because we still need it running but we're not going to be using it. The next step is WebSpy and WebSpy is pretty straightforward. You type WebSpy minus I and then the interface that you're going to use and then the IP address of the computer that you want to monitor. In my case it's 10.53. So I'll press enter and it says it's listening. So we'll go back to our browser and we see nothing's happening yet. And we'll go back to our host machine and we'll refresh our page again. Now, as you can see, this time we've got an IP address and we've got the Google page and we don't have the loop of annoyance that we had with EdderCap. The downside to this is that if we go to a web page, say, we'll go to MySpace. We go to MySpace, there's advertisements on MySpace. And if we go back over, we can see that there's a lot of tabs open here. And we've got one tab with nothing more than an advertisement in it, and then it's opening other tabs of different sections of the MySpace homepage. 
So depending on how many ads or different items that they have embedded into the page, you could end up with several tabs of useless junk that you don't need. As we see on our first tab, we have that advertisement, and then we've got the MySpace page up here. So those are the basics of viewing web traffic live using Backtrack. You can definitely go more in depth with it. However, I think just for a 10 minute video, this offers plenty of information for you to start off with. If you try doing this over the internet, your internet provider is going to be able to see all the traffic that you're monitoring. It's going to look awfully strange to them that one of their customers or a connection is created to a website and then a few seconds later your browser goes to the same site. So be careful when using this. It's best just to use it on your own system. We're going to go ahead and stop all the sniffing and poisoning and everything we have going on. Also remember anytime you run EdderCap or any other application that does art poisoning, make sure to close down the art poisoning the correct way. If you don't, you're going to end up causing problems on your network. So we'll close this out. And that's two ways to watch live traffic. Uh, the other ways that are much easier, if you have a firewall such as Smoothwall or IPCOP, you can actually turn on advanced proxy inside of those and get a list of visited URLs without having to poison your network or run any additional software. So that might be easier for those of you who don't want to go through these steps. Also, just running EdderCap or Wireshark will eventually gather a list of all the IP addresses and URLs typed in. So you can just go through the logs and those if you want to later on. So hopefully this video was a little bit informative for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down there on the page. And thanks for watching again.